Kia ora and welcome to Bust As. So we have a delay in the LifePo batteries. These are them here and they're not really quite performing the way I'd hope they would. Now um, I've talked to the supplier and I'm getting some more. Uh, he's agreed to replace them uh, despite the fact that I've pulled them apart and pretty much destroyed the circuitry and stuff behind them uh, so I wait in the meantime I bought this Jontek um, monitor battery monitor right now there's a significant difference here's the here's the other kind of the brains behind it all a lot of circuitry and shit inside here and so it's got a shunt and it's got a whole truckload of circuitry built onto the back of that shunt to drive wirelessly this little monitor now this is a People would call this a BMS, it's a battery monitoring system. Now, not to be confused with a BMS, which is a battery management system. Quite different things. Now, um, because I've finally made my choice of batteries and I'm going with lithium ion batteries, I really need to manage them. Lead acid you can get away with managing the top voltage and the bottom voltage and let the rest of the battery take care of itself but with lithium ion as I've already discussed in other videos it's a cellular um, it's a cellular issue you, you, you need to manage each cell or each group of cells I won't dwell on that but what this baby can do is tell you everything that's going on about your battery and it can potentially um, if you use additional relays and stuff it can potentially stop charging when it reaches too high a voltage and it can potentially stop discharging when it reaches too low a voltage now I've, I've been looking at battery monitors for quite a while and this one looks really cool it's very very cheap um, and it's 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 not perfect but but it is pretty cool right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go through the user manual yes it still cracks me up it's actually a user manual and um, it, it is however written entirely in English well it's pretty much English it's actually pretty good it's actually a pretty well translated manual considering what this is going to do is it's going to monitor all flow of current into the battery and out of the battery and therefore it will be able to tell you how much charge you've got left now as the voltage is a very rough indicator of how much charge you've got left even with a lead acid battery it's it's kind of you know it'll tell you that you're flat and it'll tell you that you're fully charged and, and it'll tell you that you're somewhere in between the two whereas this will tell you exactly where you are so this will say you have 22 percent left when you when you've got um, say for argument's sake you've got a 100 amp hour battery and uh, you can afford to use say 20% of that which means you've got 20 amp hours available to you so this will tell you when you've got 100 amp hours and it'll tell you when you've got 80 and therefore it'll tell you how much where you are between the 100 and the 80 and it'll do a great job of that now it can additionally <coughs> when you've reached a, a, a voltage that could damage your battery it'll turn stuff off well it'll trigger a relay which will turn stuff off so you'd need to have maybe a um, maybe a Victron battery protect or um, something like that or a big bloody big relay that can turn stuff off 
likewise, it can determine that your and, and these are programmable, so you can say, well, at 14 point something volts, turn off the charging. I don't, I don't want to go above that. So, so it can, you know, it can trigger other events, but it's based in, entirely on the pack voltage. Now, for lithium ion, that's not good enough. It's not good enough to say, well, if the battery's at this voltage, then everything inside the battery will be fine. Um, in a lead acid battery, that's a great approach, and that's probably all you'll need. So, although I'm not going with lead acid, and uh, this is probably for sale, if you want it, comment down below, um, because I won't need it. I'm still going to test it out though. I'm going to hook it all up and check that it works and check how it works and um, maybe that will uh, help you. So the first component I'm going to need is a battery. Now this little beauty here is good for, um, well, pretty much nothing. Interesting. I only just noticed this. This is a lead calcium battery. So I've been actually charging this all wrong ever since the day I bought it. Strange. But anyway, um, it's a battery. It's not going to matter that much. It's currently at 12.7 volts. I just need now to work out a way of hooking it up to everything else. Now, when it comes to hooking this thing up, it's going to be kind of important that you get it around the right way so that it me measures the flow of current across the terminals the right way around. Now, um, this thing came with two things. There's a little quick setup guide um, which covers several different models and then there's a full manual which again covers several several different models here's the different models here I have I think the 1300 here yeah, I have no way of knowing for sure but I think it's a 1300 um, which means it can cope with 300 amps now in terms of the actual wiring, that's a smaller one. Now we're into essentially the same picture that we see here. So you can use this thing for a couple of different in a couple of different ways. You can use it to measure the charge or you can use it to measure the, the effect of the load. You could of course, which I'm going to, use it to measure both at the same time, which means that your charge and your load will be hooked up to here. So in short, this terminal here, which is in this view, looking at this row of looking at this row of connectors, this terminal here goes to the negative on the battery. And this terminal here goes to everything else. And and that's really the key to it right there. There's a little bit of technicality around which ones of these to wire up. But the guts of it is that this terminal goes to the negative on the battery. This terminal goes to everything else that is connected to your earth. And when it comes to the connecting this bit, that end terminal here, that goes to the positive on the battery. And that's pretty much it, I think. Pretty straightforward. So let's get it wired up. Let's bring in the test bed. Now, despite its confusing look, what this offers is a simple positive buzz bar protected by a bunch of DC circuit breakers and a negative buzz bar. And, and additionally, it gives me a positive charging buzz bar and a negative charging buzz bar. So I can put my loads on here, I can, um, this becomes my earth, this here, this becomes my earth, 
I can run a charging system through here if if I wanted to manage the charging separately which I'm not really going to and it just makes life kind of easy so I'm going to hook that up now here's an important little side note these are bolts that go right through the circuit board so in order to tighten them up I really need to grab the back end of that bolt which means I have to remove the circuit board so there's four screws one there one there one here and one here I'm gonna to have to take them off now that I have the four screws out um, I can lift this up but only a little bit because it's connected via a strap that is soldered into the these terminals here are soldered to a strap at the back I don't know if you can see it just in there it's a grey bit right at the back which means I can only lift this up a little bit maybe just enough to get a thin spanner onto the back of these bolts now this is part of the design of this battery monitor that I do not like Now I've taken the bolt out to show you this but there's another design fault as far as I'm concerned now that is this little jumper here now it's a jumper it's a I can't recall what it does it changes something but I'm gonna leave it set at what it, what it was um, the three terminals here and it's, I don't know if you can see them or if you can see the issue but they sit almost proud of um, the, the, the surface of this so what that means is if I run my terminal out this side it actually could touch them and short them out and have God knows what effect now the screw terminals here sit well proud so if I run my cable out this side then I firstly don't have access to them and secondly will put undue stress on the circuit board so I can't do that either so my only option is to run my negative lead to the battery out this side of the unit now um, There are holes in the side which will enable me to do that but it's just something to bear in mind which also means that I have to have this fitted before I hook up my cable and then tighten it up with a socket through this hole here which I'm not going to do for testing so I'm simply going to hang it out this side it's just something you need to bear in mind um, this particular terminal won't fit through that hole so it's a little bit of a design fault in my opinion but I'm going to work around that for now so now this bolt which comes up through this hole it's a little bit crude the back it just it just tightens up against the back of the board here now that's I don't know that seriously limits how much torque you can put on that bolt and it means that I have to pull it apart to tighten it which of course is possible, Im impossible if I've got the top on um, there's, no, there's no winning move here maybe the trick would be to get you know like a, a hot glue gun or something like that or some sort of glue and just glue that in, in place which would mean that at least you could tighten it up um, you might be limited again on how much torque you can put on it but at least if you, if you glue these bolts into their spots then you can reassemble this and tighten it up as an assembly rather than having to pull it apart like I have here another important thing to note is the terminal goes on before the washer so that it's the terminal that is touching the actual shunt um, and it's not trying to pass its power through the washer the washer goes on top and then the nut goes on top of that okay so that's my main terminals hooked up this black lead 
unfortunately it's black, a bit weird for me to use the right coloured leads. Um, this will go to the negative on the battery. The red lead goes to my negative bus bar on my test bench. So just to be clear, this is the main earth for all my loads, all my charge and everything. It's really important that the only thing that touches the negative terminal on the battery is this cable here. What that means is that any movement of current in or out of the battery must pass through this shunt and uh, that, that enables it all to work. If there was any current going into the battery or out of the battery that wasn't being measured by the shunt means that this, this battery monitor is not seeing everything that's going on which makes it effectively useless. So very very important that this terminal here is hooked up to the battery and this terminal here is hooked up to everything else. Now the only other thing I need to run this is to run a positive wire into this far right hand thing here. Now which is marked on here is the V in it's a positive. Now I can hook up some other things here if I want to for relays and stuff. Today I'm not going to. There is also a USB plug here which I guess will be run from this and enables me to run the head unit off of USB. Now there is one other thing. Um, in this little bag here. It looks like a temperature sensor. It looks also like it plugs in here. I'm going to plug it in there. Now there's no mention of this in either manual. Um, I'm guessing it's a temperature sensor. We'll pr pretty quickly tell once it's up and running. Um, so let's give that a crack. So I could I can drive this off of this power source by hooking this blue wire directly to the positive on the battery. Now um, being that my battery is somewhere between uh, well somewhere somewhere less than a hundred volts, that will work fine. Now I could alternatively run a positive and a negative into these two terminals here to power this unit. Now I might do that if I was running a, a voltage higher than 100 volts or if I wanted some sort of other external supply so that this would work irrespective of what my battery was doing. So it's driven by these two uh, terminals here. This one's hooked to ground. Um, so if I simply hook that to the positive on the battery then I have all I need to run this unit. There's a relay circuit and a relay terminal down here which enables me to run an external relay um, to turn the battery on and off. Now um, there's a crudeness to that in the sense that what it will do is it will disconnect the battery. So if it's overcharging, it'll disconnect the battery. And if it's undercharging, it'll disconnect the battery. Now, um, sorry, if it's under voltage, it will disconnect the battery. Now what that means is everything will shut down, um, including your ability to charge the battery. It's a kind of it's not the best logic, but it is a reasonably safe approach for your battery because you can't do any more damage. But you will have to come up with another method of charging it. Anyway, I'm not going to use that circuitry, so I'm hooking this directly to my positive bus bar, which is protected by my breaker here, which is then going to be hooked indirectly. Well, eventually up to my positive terminal. Okay, so I have the positive battery terminal running just through a little joiner there to my circuit breaker and into my positive bus bar, which enables me to control load and stuff like that. Now, 
I have a feed coming back to the Juntec BMS. Now I've also plugged in the USB cable because I'm going to use that to power the, um, the display unit. Like so. Now my other option for just for powering this would be to run 12 volts directly to it. That's quite simple through this terminal here, which is 12 volts positive on one side, positive on one side, negative on the other, and they kindly give you a little plug, not too confusing. So if you hook that to a 12 volt supply, important that it's a 12 volt supply, then you will get um, this thing to run. Alternatively, you just run it through a USB port somewhere, but it will need some sort of power to run. Now, hopefully, when I turn all of this on, over here, well, that's pretty cool. Get a red light there. That's looking good, and this baby's come up. Now, um, it's, what's it saying? So it's saying, firstly, that it has a wired connection, so it's not using its wireless capabilities. It is unlocked, which means that, um, the keypad is not locked. So none of this is really telling us anything particularly interesting yet. However, let's grab that little thing that I think measures temperature and hold it and see what happens. Yep, sure enough, we've got a climbing temperature. So this baby here is definitely a temperature sensor and it plugs into right there that came with the unit so I could put that down wherever I put the batteries and it could measure the temperature so that if, uh, if I were charging lithium ion batteries I would not want to charge them below zero degrees and uh, it, any battery once it gets too hot you wouldn't want to be doing anything with it either so it'd be good to monitor the, monitor the temperature Alternatively, you could just use it to um, tell you how warm it is. So, I've got a battery that is 12.6 volt, volts according to this. Let's see what happens when I put it under load. So, turn on this fan. Um, this says it's drawing 2.2 amps. This says it's drawing 2.6, facing that way, and 2 that way. So yeah, around about 2.3 amps. So fresh out of the box, it works. Now, let's see if I can get it working on wireless. So this is reading everything fine, but this little symbol here says that it's plugged in. So let's unplug it. Of course it goes dead because it has no power. And I'm going to plug it instead into a little battery pack. Now the battery pack has fired it up and look at that, still reading everything fine. Just to confirm, I'll turn on a load, yeah. So now it says that it's using wireless, but that's, that's straight out the box, plug it in turn it on and it works fine. Now this is no longer connected to, and I don't know, I don't know how far away we can get. Let's find out how far away we can get while this still works. So we're going to go outside. I'm about a meter away now. That's two, that's three, we're going out the door. We're four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine. So we're 10 meters away and I have lost connection. And what this is saying is it's, yeah, it's, got, yeah, it's got network, no, it hasn't got network. So we're about 10 meters away outside of the building. So we've got a steel, well, steel garage. If I get, every now and then I get just enough signal for it to tell me what's going on. So that's actually pretty bloody good. If I come back to, I don't know, if I come back to five meters away on the opposite side of a steel roller door, I've got good signal. Everything's fine. It's reading everything fine. That's pretty cool. Right. So that's the first step done. Now, in terms of the actual setup, the operating instructions, not, not really a lot. So let's just have a look through. NCP. Now this is the negative overcurrent protection, so that's um, to protect the battery from being charged too fast, so should you have um, an extreme solar day for example, and all your panels are pumping power into the battery, you can set this at a current that would um, ensure that it can't charge the battery too fast. Quite important I think with a lead acid battery, they have a fairly limited charge rate. And it, and it explains it actually quite well here. So this says to set the negative current protection value and that could be at a range from 0 to 200 amps. So I could set that at say 50 amps and it will shut things off should it reach 50 amps. Now I really wouldn't want that to happen but it's kind of a neat feature. Now set at 0 it will do nothing. The next one is the positive overcurrent protection. This is the positive overcurrent protection. So kind of same same concept. If you've got a load that is drawing uh, drawing more current than you want to draw from the battery, um, then this can shut the load off. Again, relies on the relay. Low voltage protection. Pretty straightforward really. You might set it, say for argument's sake, at 11 volts and when the battery gets down to 11 volts it considers that uh, to be too low and shuts everything off. And of course relies on the relay. It can be anything between 0 and 120 volts. So you could say at uh, 11 volts for example, shut everything off. And the over voltage protection. Not hard to work that one out. Set the voltage that you want, the maximum voltage you want the battery when it's charging. Should it go above that, it'll shut off. Relying, of course, on the relay. Now, all of these settings, um, if they're set to zero, will do nothing at all. Essentially, turns them off. Now, the out is simply determining whether or not the output relay is turned on or off. Now it also is indicated by this light here. Clear, just a clear button resets everything back to zero. Including the timer. Um, and it's reset the voltage, the <coughs> reset the battery to 100%. Now here's an interesting thing this is not a clock, it's a timer. Um, I haven't found any setting that would allow me to make it into a clock, so it's a timer. So for this to be used as a clock, you'd need to reset it at midnight, and then it would operate essentially as a clock, I think, at least for the next 24 hours. Next, battery. A battery allows you to set the capacity of the battery so that it knows um, well how much capacity you've got. Say for argument's sake you've got 20 amp hours capacity which is what I'm going to set this to then um, <coughs> then as it uses amp hours, as it measures amps coming out then once it gets to 20 it would be zero. Right? 
I've set this at 20 amp hours, um, which is probably a little over enthusiastic. I may take it down to, say, I'm going to take it down to 10 and see what that does when I use it all. And we've currently got the range at 100%, so that's okay. The set takes you into another menu where you can adjust something called range. I have no idea what that is, so I'm not going to get into that. So I don't know what the range on and off is, or what its level is, but change time. I don't know what that does, but the display changes it from a black to a white background. Um, I do not like the white background, so I'll be leaving it on black. ADR, you can give it a communication address. You can change, you can see up the top here, you can change the address number of this unit. I'm not really sure of the functionality of that. I guess it just names the unit. Maybe if you had more than one unit, you'd need to give them two different addresses. Now, this appears to be the bottom of the menu, but if you press and hold this for three seconds, then you get into an additional three set settings. This language, currently English, The RF channel, um, again I guess that's for multiple units, so I won't be using that. And the brightness. It seems strange that this is hidden in a, in a hidden memory menu, but it allows me to adjust the brightness of the unit. So if you're planning on having this um, you know, next to your bed, you probably want to turn it down a bit. So that allows me to adjust the brightness of the unit from really quite low up to a maximum of 15 so although there are four terminals here on the side I only need one for the basic operation of this unit and that is a positive feed from the battery now that will provide the power to run the unit and um, that's, that's all it needs however I do have the option oh, and that is um, I believe the two wire setting. So this jumper is set to, can you see it there? This jumper is set on the 2W setting. Now if I want to run an external power source, um, which I do for a couple of reasons. One is I may wish to run a relay off of this, or two is because I'm trying to use this to measure like 400 volts and the system can only handle up to 100. So. In fact, I think 30, but. but then I would take this jumper off and shift it across to the 3W setting and that would enable me to put power into the unit from here and that would be anything up to 30 volts. So that is a positive terminal here and a negative terminal here. Now these are noted on the box which I've just got sitting here. So the the the, the terminal that's got a wire in it right now, that's the V in, can you see my screwdriver, that's the V in and that is required to run the unit. Now if I set it to the 3W setting I can apply a negative and positive across these two and I can run the, that positive as a positive feed for the relay to use a relay to turn other things on and off. So what the hell, let's test this um, overcurrent. So what I'm going to do is I've set it to 5 amps, and that's OK. And um, it's turned itself off, so I'll turn it on. So the relay's on, um, and that's signified by this light. And I'm drawing 3 amps with my fridge, and now I'm going to turn on my fan. And as soon as I get over 5 amp, I get a little error reading saying the overcurrent protection has, has, has kicked in. 
my relay has effectively, or my little light signifying my relay has switched off. So, although I haven't got a relay and of course my load's still actually drawing current, it has triggered it and would have effectively turned it off. Now, interesting to note when I stop drawing that current, um, this remains off. So I have to go in manually and turn it back on to reset it. That's really just to show that it works. Um, I'm not going to use that, I'm, I'm not using that functionality, but um, obviously it works. Nearly empty. That's pretty buddy and all. Let's get rid of that. So other than noting that the temperature here has dropped to 22 degrees, this baby's down to 4%. Now, um, that's an interesting point. Now, I've set this at 10 amps, and it has consumed... It's a little bit annoying. 9.62 amp hours, which means that it's used 96% of that 10 amps. So when you set, so when you set the amp hours on here, you're talking about the usable amp hours, not the battery. So if you've got a hundred amp hour um, lead acid battery, you you might want to use 20, 30 percent of that. So you're, you're telling this unit that it's 30 amp hours and this will say that you are at 4% when you've used 96% of that 30 amp hours because you don't actually want to use the whole battery be a wreck it. Look at that, 0%. So technically this is flat. Um, if I had set the low voltage at, well, 11.98, it'll all have turned off now. Um, it doesn't seem to have a percentage voltage thing, but a percentage cutoff, but then that probably wouldn't make sense anyway, because the percentage is a defined thing. It's about, it's a visual indicator of how much battery you've got left. Everything about it works. I'm very happy with it. Now, this is not the sort of thing that's going to talk to your phone on Bluetooth or hook up to your Wi-Fi and download uh, data history or anything like that. This is a in-your-face, live, real-time battery monitoring system that has the added functionality of being able to turn on and off to being able to disconnect your battery if hooked up to an appropriate relay. So, it's some pretty cool that's some pretty cool functionality for, you know, something so cheap and nasty. Very impressive, this. So, here's an interesting development. This baby here has been monitoring the charge and discharge of several different batteries. This one's a buggered one I've just taken out of my Land Rover. Um, and it stopped working. Now, what I find is if I wiggle it just right, it comes back on and shows just how stuffed this battery is. Now it's not working again. Now that's not impressive. Let's try a different cable. So I plug this different cable in, and it's still unreliable so um, that's a little bit concerning USB port is not the best way to drive this little unit because it's unreliable Now, you could probably fiddle around with that USB port. USB's notoriously weak anyway. So, probably the smartest way anyway to power this, because you could run this a long way away, 
if you have just 12 volts. So first thoughts, this thing's bloody great. It looks good, it's got a nice simple interface, you know, you can... Oh, actually it draws so little power, my battery pack thinks there's nothing plugged in and keeps turning off. Um, so that's, that's some pretty good news right there. Uh, but it's, it's really simple to set up, it looks awesome. Uh, it can be can be kind of flush mounted. You can see it's got uh, some tabs there, um, or you could just maybe a bit of sticky tape, and just literally stick it to a surface. Comes with everything you need except for the relay. Um, if you intend to use a relay to turn everything on and off. Now on that subject, it's something you may need to be a little bit careful of if you go that way. Um, in that there's no mention in the manual uh, how much current that circuit can handle in turning a relay on and off. And quite often, um, in, you know, an electronic circuit like that is not very much. So you'd probably want a relay that's, obviously you need a relay that's capable of turning on and off the amount of current that you might be using for uh, discharging or charging. So that's probably quite a significant relay, but you also want one that uses very little current to operate. Um, obviously from the point of view of when the relay is on, you don't want to be drawing current unnecessarily from your battery. And um, since the current for the relay is coming through this unit, you don't want to put too much load on the unit itself anyway. So you're talking, you know, probably a um, a solid state relay which has a very low uh, load or, or, or some sort of latching relay or something quite fancy like a Victron battery protect for example that's that's a unit that can remotely turn on and off big currents um, in fact I'm probably going to get one of those now with that in mind um, it's still quite a powerful setup also worth noting is it's just one relay so um, it only has one output it only has one relay you could run two of these these are cheap they're 30 50 dollars or something like that they're, they're, they're really cheap considering what they're capable of doing you could literally run two of them one measuring the solar charging coming in and one measuring the battery um, which is the same sort of setup I'm using uh, with two shunts now what that would enable you to do is you could still measure the battery fully but you could have that one only connected to or only capable of turning off the load on the battery and ignore the, 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 the high voltage and um, high charge current settings and on the other one you'd be using that to measure the charge and have that only turning off the charging now what that would enable you to do it would mean that if your battery went flat it would still charge um, maybe that's just too fancy maybe, maybe that's not really necessary maybe disconnecting the entire battery is an acceptable thing I don't really like the idea of it that's all but that aside that's this is a great little battery monitor no question about it AliExpress being what it is, I thought I'd ordered the 300 amp unit. Um, I've got the 200 amp unit. That's probably ample for um, for what I was going to use it for in a 24 volt setup. 200 amps, 24 volts. That's a lot of power. So when you're selecting a shunt, you kind of don't want to go um, to get a really high amp shunt unless you need it. Uh, obviously, your shunt needs to be. Uh, maybe 50% more than uh, your, your anticipated load um, otherwise it'll get quite warm um, but it wouldn't make sense to go much more than that because as your shunt increases in its current carrying capability it reduces in its resolution or in its uh, how fine the measurements will be that it's taking not critical but interesting so so this unit can read down to 0 0.01 of a volt, a volt 0 0.01 of a volt and 0 0.1 of an amp. So the installation is super easy, super easy. 
you just hook it in series with the battery negative cable so that it's the first thing out of the battery and run a hot wire to it from the positive side and you're done. You're done in terms of firing it up. Um, it operated straight out of the box both plugged in and wireless with no settings required whatsoever. You do of course have to set um, your battery capacity and um, tell it when it's first charged. So thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, maybe found it useful. If you did, hit all the buttons, hit the like and subscribe, hit, hit them all. And um, hopefully that means we'll see you again soon. Take care. Mighty well.